Assalamu alaikum, my friends. How are you all today? Good. Good. Alhamdulillah. What a nice day to be at the masjid, isn't it? I'm yeah. so grateful to be here with you guys. Alhamdulillah. So the way that we usually start, well, first we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and then we like to greet each other because do we just walk into a room and just start doing stuff without saying Assalamu alaikum? Oh, we like to say assalamu alaikum, right? So we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam. Can you sing that with me? Can you sing with me? Do you, can you guys? You guys have been here so many times. You should know this song already. Ready? Let's try that again from the beginning, but I want to hear you guys because I'm saying salam, but no one is saying salam back to me. So you say it with me. Ready? One, two, three. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam. I greet you with peace, my dear friends. I greet you with peace, my dear friends. I greet you with peace, my dear friends. Salamu assalam. Assalamu alaikum. It is so nice to have you all here with me today. Alhamdulillah. So, the thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about today is something that is very, very, very special. Who knows what is a very, very, very special book that we are able to read? What? The Quran! Alhamdulillah. Is that what you were going to say? Is that a special book? That's a very special book that we have, right? And you know, the, the slides are not working, but the... The title of my story time was called Quran, the best miracle. Do you know what that word miracle means? What do you think it means? Oh, something that can never happen? Okay. Oh, but it can happen sometimes. That's a really good explanation because it's something that doesn't normally happen, right? And if it happens, we can't really explain how it happened. It's rare. That's a good word to use. It is rare. It's something that happens that we normally don't see happen, right? So can you say that word with me? A miracle. It's a miracle. The Quran is a miracle. Do you know why it's a miracle? Why do you think it's a miracle? It was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala down to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in cave Hira. MashaAllah. You knew the exact answer. You, you're absolutely right. And do you know, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? By the Quran? Did he send something or somebody? An angel. What is the angel's name? Angel Jibra'il. Have you heard of Angel Jibra'il? Yes, you have? Me too. So that's one of the stories we're going to read. This is a book called Good Night Stories from the Quran. I know, it's not night. Let's say Good Day Stories from the Quran. Is that better? Don't read the night part. Okay. The Quran revealed during Ramadan. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would often sit alone in the cave of Hira. Have you ever been in a cave before? Yeah. You have? How, how does it, like, is it very bright in a cave? No. 
No, what is it? Dark. It's dark in a cave. How do you think you would feel if you were alone in a cave? Would, would you feel bad? Would you feel kind of scared? No? You're very brave. Would you feel scared? A little bit? It's very dark in a cave, right? But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi he would often go to this cave and he would sit there alone. And he would pray. He would pray and meditate there, surrounded by nature, and would ask the creator of the heavens and earth for answers to his questions, such as, what is man's true role in life? Like, Allah, what am I supposed to do in my life? He would sit there and he would ask Allah, what does, what does the Lord require of us? He would ask, Allah, what do you require from me? What do you want me to do? From where does man come? And where will he go after? So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would sit and he would say, Allah, where do I come from? Where did I come from? And where am I going to go? These are the questions that he would have. Do some of you guys have those questions sometimes? Do you wonder like, hmm, where did I come from? How did I get here? Where am I going to go? You have those questions? What? You got to the masjid by the car? Yeah. But I mean, like, how did you come to earth? Allah sent you. Allah sent you. Ooh, mashallah, what a good answer. One night during Ramadan, Angel Jibreel is going to come. One night during Ramadan, the Prophet wasallam sat all alone, as usual, in the cave. Suddenly, the angel Jibreel appeared before him in human form and taught him the very first verses of the Quran. The Prophet felt they were actually being written on his heart. Like, how would you feel if you were alone in a cave and all of a sudden you see somebody there? How would you feel? Would you be a little, like, startled? Like, who's that? What are you? What are you doing here? Maybe he didn't know it was an angel. He just all of a sudden saw something. And all, okay, wait. The Quran thus began to be revealed by Allah to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All this took 23 long years to complete. So over 23 years of his life, every now and then, the angel Jibreel would come and tell him to recite part of the Quran. And he would give him verses. The Prophet began giving the message of the Quran to the people of Mecca as ordered by Allah. But not many of them liked his teachings and they became his dire enemies. They all set out to harm him and his handful of followers. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would come with these messages that he would get from the angel Jibreel, but some of the people, they would say, we don't want to hear that. We don't believe you. So they wouldn't listen to him, and they would become his enemies. But then there were some people who would listen to him, and they believed what he was, he was saying and what he was teaching. Okay. okay. And from there, the Quran teaches us to be good. Good. Let me ask you guys, what, what does the Quran teach us? To be good, you said? To be great? To be nice? To be nice? <clears throat> To be respectful, to be happy, to be kind. Mashallah, you guys have wonderful answers. Well, you know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes, maybe if you've wondered, hmm, how, how did this all get created? How did this all come to be? Yes, by Allah. But you know what? The reason that we know that you can say that it was created by Allah is that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu 
brought us the message of the Quran so we know the answers. Like, you know those answers. But the people who were first hearing about this, it was their first time. They had never heard something like that before. <clears throat> what? I think that's why they didn't listen. Because they weren't sure. But the... The Quran teaches us about how Allah, one of the things that it teaches us is that how Allah created everything. So this is another book, Quran Stories for Kids, and it's the same author, but it's a different part I want to read to you in here. So this is about <clears throat> life begins. So in the Quran, Allah tells us, how life begins. Yes? Hello. Allah's going to create everything? <clears throat> so it says, long, long ago, there was no earth, no sky, no sun, no planets, no clouds, no words, no moon, no nothing. <laughs> Good answer. There was no nothing. Then how was their words? I'm going to get there. Then there was darkness everywhere. So just imagine, it, there was nothing and it was just dark. Then Allah thought of making a beautiful world. A world full of purpose. Yeah. So have you ever just been sitting and you have nothing to do and you're like, hmm, I want to make something. And you have this like idea, right? And you then you go and you create something. So Allah is the creator of all that we see, right? Allah just said the words and there was the earth and the sky, can you imagine you want to like just go do a painting and you're like earth and it just like paints an earth without you actually having to do anything. You got to go get your paintbrush, you got to get your canvas, you got to get paint, you got to be able to be a good drawer, right? But Allah just said, I want to make an earth, I want to make a sky. There was the bright sun, the shining moon and twinkling stars. That, that's, that's Allah's power, that he just says, I want this, and it, and it gets created. Yes? He said he wanted to make sense. How did it come? I'll get there, inshallah. Then came the dry land and the oceans. By just saying the words, Allah made them all. Allah made the earth in two days. On it, he placed very big mountains. In six days, he formed the sky into seven heavens. The lowest heaven, he hung with brilliant stars and sent bright comets flying between them. Allah made the earth circle around the sun so that there would be night and day and many different seasons too. If you start learning about how everything works and how it's just so perfect, it's amazing, subhanAllah. And the Quran talks about these things. Allah filled the vast universe <clears throat> with thousands of stars and many planets all spinning swiftly, but never touching each other. The planets, they're just floating, but they don't crash into each other. But well, like a medium. What? Medium. Mediums? Yeah, like rock. Oh, they're like rocks? Yeah, like the hard rocks. Yeah? Did you want to say something? No? Okay. Allah made lovely flowers, roses and pansies, bluebells and lupins, hollyhocks and daisies. Where did the flowers come from? Allah made them all. He made all things large and tiny, little insects and black ants that crawl around on the ground, and the busy bees that fly from flower to flower to collect sweet honey. honey.
But did you know that the bees also do another job? They make honey, but they do a really, really important job. Do you know what it is? They pollinate the flowers. And if we didn't have things like bees and birds, hummingbirds, butterflies, then the fruits that grow on some of the trees, that wouldn't happen. And we wouldn't have honey. Oh, what, what a shame that would be. And if we didn't have honey. No honey. And no honey. That would be so sad. We actually really depend on the bees because they go to all the flowers and they pollinate them and that's how we get our food. They make wax and you can use the wax, you can use the honey. The bees are an incredible creature and Allah talks about them and teaches us about them in the Quran. They can sting you. Huh? They can sting you. They can sting you. They can. Have you ever been stung by a bee? Yeah. Raise your hand if you've been stung by a bee. You have I have not. Did you, you did? How did it feel? It just hurt. For a long time or just for a little bit? Half a day. Yeah? You have been? Yeah. Did you know that you can even get stung by a bee that's not alive? My son, two times has been stung, both of my sons, have been stung by bees that were dead on the ground. Well, one of my son stepped on one of them, and then he got a bee sting on the bottom of his foot because that bee, it still had its stinger. And so this, the stinger went into my son's foot. And then the other one, my, my younger son, he got stung because his hand was in the water of a lake. And there was a dead bee on the top of the water. You know, sometimes maybe if you go to the pool or the lake, you see them. They're at the top of the water. And it floated and it stung his little tiny finger. He was just one or two. Yeah. And then he started crying and I was like, what happened? And I saw this little stinger in his pinky. And it got so swollen. But yeah, they can sting you. But even, even dead ones can sting you. So you got to watch where you're stepping inshallah, or what you're touching. Allah made juicy fruits. So like we said, those bees, they go and they pollinate the flowers and then we get juicy fruits. Mangoes, oranges, cherries, crunchy apples, sweet grapes, and soft bananas. Where did the fruits come from? Allah made them all. Okay, raise your hand if you want to tell me your favorite fruit. Okay. I'll go in, in this direction, yes. Strawberries. Watermelon. Watermelon. Pomegranate. Pomegranate and watermelon. Pomegranate and watermelon. Did you have one? Watermelon. watermelon. Mango. Mango. Oh, mango. What's yours? Raspberry. Apple, raspberry. Strawberry. Raspberries? Look at all of the variety. Say subhanallah. There is so much variety of the foods that we can choose to eat. And Allah made them all for us to enjoy. But imagine the fruits in Jannah. There's going to be even stuff that we've and never... And some healthy candies. And healthy candies? <laughs> You'll never be, but, but what is better? A piece of fruit or that, that health, even if it's a healthy candy, which one is better? Fruit. The fruit. The fruits are from Allah's creation. Those candies, people take them and they put all these ingredients in a factory and they mix it up and then they, they give it to you in a package. The fruits, they come from Allah's creation, from the trees that he made, from the seeds that grow the trees. But what, the four trees but which one is not halal? The red ones. The, the candies? Yeah, the red candies. Oh, the red candies. Oh, okay, okay. With the red coloring? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Oh, yeah. Sometimes they do use red bugs. Allah made the animals. Some live in the forests. Large elephants, fat hippos, cunning foxes, fierce tigers, striped zebras, and tall giraffes. 
fluffy rabbits, strong horses, grazing cows and sheep. Allah made them all. All of them. And can you imagine if you go to different parts of the world, there are different kinds of animals in different areas. Can, can you leave that there? If you go to like Hawaii, you might see animals that you don't see here. If you go to Africa, you'll see animals there that you don't see here. SubhanAllah, there's different kinds of animals everywhere. First you and then you. You went to Hawaii? Did you see any animals that were new to you? Not really? You too? You, went, you both went to Hawaii because you're sisters. You went together, right? <laughs> oh, mashallah. It's so beautiful, right? Beautiful birds flying in the sky, spreading their wings and closing them. Green parrots, white ducks, colorful chickens, flying sparrows, dancing peacocks, singing quails, diving kingfishers, warbling larks, and many, many more. Where did they all come from? Allah. Yeah. It's like repetitive at the end, right? Allah made them all because it's just reminding us that all of this vast creation, it was all created by Allah for us to benefit from. And we use the animals, right? Yes. I think that's supposed to be like a walrus. Yeah. <laughs> Does it? Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Allah made the large oceans and the big seas, which cover the earth with water and form into deep lakes and long rivers. Have you ever thought about how much of the earth is water? A thousand? Do you think more of the earth is land or more of the earth is water? More of the earth is water. And more of your body is also water. You need water to have life, right? And if more of the earth is water, do you think that we even know everything that lives on this planet earth? No, because there are things in the, in the oceans that humans have still not learned about. They've still not discovered them. There's a whole life happening in the oceans of the earth that we, we still haven't been able to explore. And that's why scientists are so interested in going into the ocean so they can learn about these creations and these creatures that Allah has made. Some scientists, their whole job is to go and look for animals that no one has ever discovered before. What a cool job, right? Because when you see that animal, you'd be like, SubhanAllah, look at another creation of Allah that I just discovered. How cool would that be? Maybe one day you guys will be scientists that you go and you get to discover Allah's creation. Allah made the sea monsters and all the fishes big and small, large blue whales like mountains and cruel tiger sharks with big jaws. Oh, what's this animal? Crab. Allah made the crabs and lobsters and shrimps, huge eels and octopuses, swordfish and jellyfish, and all the many ocean plants and animals. SubhanAllah. Allah gave us rain and sunshine, cool breezes and clouds passing by. Thank you, Allah, for making such a wonderful world. You think you know what's going to happen in the first what? You think so? So when we get to experience this life on this earth and all of Allah's creation, what should we say? What should we say to Allah? Alhamdulillah, right? Show our gratitude for all of his creation. Okay, are you ready for another story? Yeah. Or do you guys have some, 
some wiggles. Do you need to w stand up and do some stretching? No? You need to stretch? Okay, why don't you stand up and do 10 jumping jacks? What? Okay, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now touch your toes. Now turn around. Now pat your head. Now sit on your bottom. Now wiggle your nose. <laughs> you wiggled your whole head. <laughs> Can you wiggle your nose? Is it hard to do? Oh, you can flare your nostrils. Can you wiggle your nose? Can you blink your eyes? Can you wiggle your ears? Oh, I don't know anyone who can do that. Okay, who can do this thing with your eyebrows, like where you take one of them up and the... Can you do that? No. That's so hard. That's really cool, though. I always was impressed by... You can kind of do it. Can you... Oh, can you do um, a fish face? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. This is a cool book that I just got. You guys should all get it, inshallah. It's called Migo and Ali, Love for the Prophets by Zainab Mian and illustrated by, I don't know if that's a T or a Z, Tugrul Karakan. I hope I said that right, inshallah. So, you you had a guess. What did you think I was going to talk about now? Which one you said? Huh? You said it before. Well, I think the next one is going to be about the first man, right? Isn't that what you said? Yeah. Prophet Adam. A D A M. Adam, alayhi salam. You read this before? Or have you seen this book? I know that story. I just heard about this book from Brother Munir. He told me about it. Okay. Oh, only the first chapter? There's a lot of stories in it. And it's really nice. It has like nice pictures, mashallah. It's really nicely done. Adam, alayhi salam, was the first man and the first prophet. Allah made his human shape from sticky clay, just like you make things from Play-Doh. Can you imagine like, like clay is like Play-Doh and it's just like sh shaping the perfect human? I have Play-Doh in my home. You cannot imagine that. That would be the hardest thing because Play-Doh is like... It's Allah. I don't have enough clay. Allah can do whatever he wants. I, I, I can build a human out clay and Play-Doh. You like to play Play-Doh? Yeah. You do too. Mm. Allah used lots of different colors to make Adam, alayhi salam. And because all humans are children of Adam, alayhi salam, we see people all over the world of different colors. But then Allah did something that you and I can't do with Play-Doh and that nobody but Allah can do. He breathed life into Adam, alayhi salam. That, just imagine, if you have clay, does it move? Can it talk? Can it eat? No. Can it read? Can it see? No, you just make it, right? You, the, like, you could take Play-Doh, and you could probably make, like, I don't know, a cat. Or, but will or your cat car? become your pet? Exactly. But you don't have the ability to make something come to life, right? But Allah has that ability. So Allah created the form and then he gave life. So Adam salam started moving because Allah willed that. He wanted him to be created. All the angels thought Adam was amazing. But another creature called Iblis did not. And he was very jealous of him. Do you know what it means to be jealous? Be, be, bad. Yeah. If somebody else has something and you want it, and then it creates like this bad feeling inside of you, right? I want that. That's called being jealous. Did you want to say something?
Yeah, you guys have all heard this story, I'm sure. And you know it very well. It's so nice to hear that all of you know it. Iblis was uh, the, the, another, another name is Shaitan, you're right. Allah taught Adam alayhi salam the names of things. So you guys were saying, how did they have words? So Allah taught him the names of things like bird, star, tree, and cloud, just like your parents taught you. How did he teach him all the words? I wasn't there to know exactly. <laughs> were you there? <laughs> but Allah tells us in the stories of the in the Quran that he taught Adam alayhi salam the words. And I don't know, maybe he created a part of his brain that he would know all of these different words for things. This book? How did they make this book? Um, the person who wrote it? How did they know what? The person who wrote this book? They took stories from the Quran and they made a book. So these, these are similar stories in the Quran, but somebody just made a book out of it and they made some pictures and stuff. Okay, Allah taught Adam to absolutely love to learn about everything. That's why we all love to learn. Do you love to learn? Yes. You love to learn. You know what? When you learn, you're becoming smarter, right? Is it better to know more or to not know a lot? More. We want to know more, right? So if there's something we don't know about, we can read books. More. We can ask our parents. If you go to school, you can ask your teacher. You can raise your hand and ask a question. Oh, why is there a picture of the apple? Yeah. Well, maybe I'm going to get to that. I have to keep reading. Okay. When Adam alayhi salam started to feel lonely, Allah made him a wife called Hawa or Eve. Adam and Hawa lived in a place called paradise, which is more wonderful paradise. than we can imagine. Allah had only asked them never to go near one particular tree. But after many years, Shaitan made them forget and they ate fruit from that tree. Shaitan had tricked them and pretended to be their friend. Adam and Hawa were very sad about what they did, so Allah forgave them. He sent them to live on earth, so Adam salam, could be his first messenger. Your slaw was second. Huh? Your slaw was second. So this book, it goes through all of the, the prophets. So if you don't have this book, maybe... Maybe it will be a nice Eid present or a birthday present or something. It's a very nice book. Um, I was very happy to learn about it. Okay, how are we doing on time? Okay. I'm going to read this book. Oh, more. Perfect. Your mom came. You want to give me the rest? All right, awesome. I love all of these um, raffle submissions today. This one? Oh, you do? So you've already read this book. Oh, you got it in school. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's a nice. Yeah, and this author, so it's called the Quran, My Best Friend. And the author, Suzanne Derani, she used to live in this community, but I think she moved. But... Oh, you got to meet her? How cool. Online classes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. Oh, he went. Okay. So this is by Suzanne Durrani and illustrated by Jenny Rainish. The pictures are really nice, right? MashaAllah. The Quran will always be our best friend if we remember how it takes us to an end by drawing us closer 
to our loving Creator, who grants us a reward that is much greater. What? It's rhyming. Yeah, it is rhyming. See, they're sitting here and they're reading the Quran. They're learning the lessons in it. The Quran is Allah's great word that spreads all the light and love, even to the beautiful bird, giving it blessings from above. Angel Jibreel came to the cave. He said, Oh, Muhammad, recite in the name of Allah, who will always save. And this surely was not a game. The Prophet ﷺ ran to Khadija, his beloved wife, where she reassured him about his life. He would not be in danger, for he is a great man. And this is how his journey began. Don't you see how the elephant stopped to protect the Kaaba, every brick and block, preventing them from getting near? Abraha's army was paralyzed with fear. Allah sent the birds to drop the rocks to rid the army like long corn stalks. Look at these birds. They're, they're coming and um, dropping the rocks and the, there's elephants. He, he, was, uh, uh, he was in, a, in the army that he was fighting against. Abu Bakr was nervous in the cave. But Prophet Muhammad wasallam helped him be brave. He said, worry not, for Allah is near. This was a message he made very clear. Sending a spider to spin its web, along with a pigeon and her eggs. The beloved Prophet wasallam had no fear, for he was certain that Allah was near. Exactly. The Hopo was made to witness Queen Sheba, who worshipped the sun and wasn't a believer. Prophet Suleiman came to know and learn how Shaitan tricked the queen and made her turn. Against the worship of one true God, Shaitan sat back and continued his fraud. But Shaitan will definitely not have the last laugh, for the Quran will continue to witness on behalf of all the Muslims who hold it near and dear, the message of Allah is brilliant and clear. Oh, in your book? Oh, maybe the colors changed, I don't know. Um, see where it says, of all the Muslims who hold it near and dear, do you know anybody who's memorized the Quran? No? Do you, you do? Mashallah, your cousin. Are they somebody who's young? Your dada knows Quran? Yeah, mashallah. You and know, there. And your dad? There are some people who memorize the Quran. So that is in, yeah, the whole Quran. And it's so dear to their hearts. And you know what? What is more special than the words that Allah told us? Allah told us through the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we know the actual words of Allah. We can actually talk to Allah. Maybe we wonder, oh, well, Allah doesn't talk to me. How do I know about Allah? Well, Allah sent us his words. All we when have to do pray. is read them. When you when you pray, you are reading the words of Allah, right? That is Allah's communication with you. Isn't that amazing? Maybe some people think that we don't communicate with Allah. But when you are reading the words in the Quran, you are communicating with Allah. He is talking to you, each one of you, each one of us, all throughout this history of time, since the time of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. We have communication with Allah. Alhamdulillah. Our beloved Prophet وسلم, ascended to the heavens on the beautiful journey that was oh so splendid. 
Isra wal Miraj finalized the five prayers, showing us how the Prophet never despairs. We learn in the Quran about the sun and the moon and the time for prayer at around high noon. And when the nightfall is very clear, the stars in the sky shine brightly, my dear. Can I answer your questions after? Mm -hmm. The word thingy? The bird. Oh, I think that's supposed to be when he went, Barak, when he went on the... It, yeah. We look to the Quran for healing food, where Allah shows us how honey is good. Take from it and enjoy it sweet, and say Bismillah for this blessed treat. To love the Quran, you have to know what it means. Look to the stories and lessons and learn your deen. The Quran shows how to treat our father and mother who care for us and always give cover. The heart must remain pure and sincere for the words of Allah to draw forever near. The Quran is a blessing given to a heart of light in the heavens where it will be said, go ahead, recite, allowing you to soar to a very great height. May Allah grant his mercy and love and send us blessings from up above, drinking from the Prophet's blessed hands, keeping our bond with him strong by his command. Amen. Oh Allah, send your peace, blessings, and praise to our beloved Prophet and allow us to be raised along with those who hold him dear. And that's the message that Allah made clear. Alhamdulillah. What a beautiful book, mashallah. <laughs> I don't know, this was someone's book and I, I'm using it. But the Quran is the way that we can be close to Allah. And if you haven't started learning any of it, then you can ask your parents, can I, can I go and learn? You know what, I'm even taking classes right now because to, to learn my tajweed so that I can read and I can become a better reader. So make dua for me. Huh? You read the Quran, mashallah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's your way of getting close to Allah, right? That we can, we can communicate with Him. So we don't have the screen, but um, I found a really beautiful um, song. Let me see if I can get the words. It's called Quran. Have you heard of, there's... On YouTube, there's like a cartoon called The Little Believers. Have you heard of that? Oh, you have, mashallah. So there's a singer. He sings nasheeds and uh, what? His name is Muad. Have you heard of him? He, he, he has like YouTube videos that you can watch. And then there's, there's cartoons that talk about different things. It's called The Little Believers. And actually, you remember that book that I read? Um, the Cranky Kareem one. So the author of that book, she and him do this cartoon together. They, they created this cartoon. So you can watch that on YouTube. I think maybe that's where, the only place you can watch it. I don't know. <clears throat> but this song they had on one of their episodes on the Quran. So I, I wasn't able to get it on the screen so you guys can follow along with me. But um, I can sing it with you, and then maybe if you want to sing it with me too, you can, uh, I don't know, what part could you sing? Maybe, maybe when I get to the part that says Quran, Quran, okay? It's kind of, it kind of tells the story of how we got the Quran, a little bit at the beginning. Ready? It all started when Jibreel came down from the sky. To the cave of Hira, where Muhammad sat late at night. He told him to read and read in the name of your Lord. Jannah is your home and Quran is the door. 
Words of Allah we read, made for our hearts to believe. A miracle sent through Jibreel, a mercy for mankind. So many lessons we learn, the most perfect book in this world. A cure for all of our hurts everlasting through time. So can you read this part with me? Quran, Quran, the best of miracles. Quran, Quran, every word, every syllable. Allah, 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 Allah. Quran, Quran, the best of miracles. The Quran is a miracle. It's the best of the miracles. Alhamdulillah for the Quran. I'm glad you guys are learning and you know how to read and you can read it and you can teach it to those of us who don't know how to read. Inshallah, you'll be your teacher inshallah one day. Yeah? Alhamdulillah. Thank you guys for coming.